Okay, lesson 94, page 574 is compound probability. We've talked about probability. I hope you remember um, the ratio, the number of favorable outcomes to the number of possible outcomes. So written as a ratio or as a fraction, what we want to happen to what can happen. All right, so the most common way to explain probability that people use is when you flip a coin. So whether you're going to get heads or tails. All right, so if I said, what's the probability um, if I flip this coin and I'm holding a quarter, what's the probability that it'll land on heads? And you would say, well, one half, one out of two. All right, we would write that like that as a fraction. Because if I want to get heads, that's the favorable outcome. That's the one I want. But there's two possible outcomes. So you write that as a ratio, as a fraction. All right, now compound probability is where um, this is when you have um, something you want to happen and then something else after that, and so you're building on different um, outcomes. All right, so for instance, if you flip a coin, um, you could get heads or you could get tails. All right, so let's just say you flip a coin and um, these are your options. All right, now if you flip that coin again, okay, then let's just say you get heads the first time. You flip that coin, you get heads. And then you're going to flip it again. All right, what are the two options when you flip it again? Well, you could still get heads or you could get tails. Now, what if you flip it and you get tails and then you flip it again after that? Well, when you flip it again, you still might get heads or you might get tails. All right, so what if I asked you, all right, if I flip this coin twice, what is the probability that I will get heads both times? All right, well, we can look at our diagram. All right, if I flip it and I get heads, and I flip it again and get heads, that's one out of four, right? Because if I flip it and I get heads, and then I flip it again, I could get heads or tails. And if I flip it and I get tails the first time, well, then I've already ruined my chances because I can't get heads and heads again because I got tails the first time. So if you flip a coin twice, these are your four options. So the likelihood of you getting heads and heads is now one fourth, one out of four options. All right, so this is a little bit different than the probability you've been doing where you just do something once or on the first try, all right? These are building on top of each other. All right, so look in your book at page 576. All right, at the top of the page, it says, the probability of independent events occurring in a specified order is the product of the probabilities of each event, okay? The product. So in this case, all right, the first time you flip that coin, one out of two chances you're gonna get heads. The second time you flip it, Again, one out of two chances. So the probability of these two independent events occurring in this order is the product of the two probabilities of the independent events. One half times one half, which is equal to one fourth. Okay, so with that in mind, look at example one. You have a spinner here. And example one says the face of this spinner is divided into four congruent sections. What is the probability of getting a two on the first spin and a one on the second spin? All right, well, on your first spin, the chance of you getting a two is one out of four. On your second spin, the chance of you getting a one is one out of four. All right, so the chance of you getting a two and getting a one is going to be the product of the two events. So that's going to be one out of 16. All right, so that's the chance of you getting a one, or getting a two and then getting a one. All right, look at example two. Jim tossed a coin and turned it up heads, and it turned up heads. What is the probability that he will get heads on the next toss of the coin? All right, now just think about this, even though what we've just been talking about, if you flip a coin and it turns up heads, what's the probability that on your next flip you'll get heads? Well, it's one half. All right, just because you got heads the first time, that doesn't lessen your chances the next time. All right, so make sure you're thinking about these logically. It would still be one half. All right, look at example three. 
What is the probability of rolling a 12 with one roll of a pair of dice? All right, good thing it says pair because if it just said with one roll of a die, obviously no chance we're going to get a 12, but we have a pair here. All right, well, in order to get a 12, you would have to roll a six with both die, with both dice. So um, that's going to be one out of six times one out of six. So the chance of you getting a 12 with one roll of a die is one out of 36. Now, if you look at the top of page 577, you've got this lovely chart um, of the different outcomes. Let's see if I can get it in here. Of dies. Now, I have this bookmarked in my book. I would suggest you do too, unless you memorize it. I did have a student who memorized this once. Um, so, you can see here, you've got two dice, so you have a pair. All right, and then these are all your chances. So the chance of you getting a two, the probability of you getting a three, four, and so on and so forth. All right, so the most likely one that you can roll with one roll is a seven, and then it decreases both ways after that. And you can see the likelihood of you getting a 12 is one out of 36, six times six, 36. All right, so for these kind of questions, you can come back to your chart, um, but try to remember those. And if you absolutely had to, you could recreate this chart. Um, obviously because you know about the die and whatnot. Okay, dice. So, with that chart, if you're looking at that chart, you can answer number four. With one roll of a pair of dice, what is the probability of rolling a number greater than nine? So you can go to your chart and you can count, all right? You've got the chance of getting 10 three times, 11 twice, and 12 once. So all together, that's one, two, three, four, five, six out of 36. And you want to reduce that. All right, so you've got a one out of six chance with one roll of a pair of dice of rolling greater than a nine. All right, look at example five. All right, these are the ones that um, a lot of times get people, all right, because you have to keep track and you've got to be thinking as you're doing these problems. It says, from a well-mixed deck of cards, Sam selected and held one card. Then a second card, then a third, and finally a fourth card. What is the probability that the four cards Sam selected are aces? All right, now you've got to have your card knowledge handy. All right, how many cards are in a deck of cards? 52. And how many aces are in a deck of cards? Four. All right, so if he's holding out 52 cards and he selects one, then the chance of him getting an ace on that first try are four out of 52, right? Because there's 52 cards and there's four aces in there. Now, the second time he selects, how many cards are in the, the hand? Well, not 52 because he just took one out. So now there's only 51. And let's just say he did get that ace. Now there's only three aces left. Right now, the third time he selects, now there's only 50 cards. And let's just say he has gotten two aces. Now there's only two aces left. And then the next time he selects, now there's only 49 cards. And there's only one ace left if he's actually gotten an ace all three times. So now it's one out of 49, all right? So for this one, you can't just go four over 52 four times because that doesn't make logical sense. All right, if he's taking cards away from the deck, there's not 52 each time. All right, so we have to multiply all of these products to figure out the answer, okay? Now, we can do some canceling here, all right? Um, for instance, you can do two into 50, right? Cut in half, 25, okay? And um, you know that five plus one is six, so you know that three can go into 51, Okay, so three will go in there once, and that'll be, or <laughs> once, and then 17, so you can cancel that. All right, four will go into 52 13 times. Hopefully you guys have been catching that because you have been doing a lot of problems with, with cards. All right, so now you've got all ones on the top. So let's see, a one out of, ooh, 13 times 7 times 25 times 49. 
all right? Now, I don't have room to do all this multiplication, but if you did it out, you would get 270,725. All right, so the chance of you, if you held out a deck of cards, the chance of you getting an ace on the first four draws, getting all the aces is one out of 270,725. So not very good chances, all right? So I wouldn't suggest making that gamble anytime soon or any gamble for that matter. All right, those are all of the examples. Go ahead and work the three practice problems. Um, go ahead and work those and see if you can do those and then check your work and press play on the video and I'll let you know if you got them correct. All right, I'm assuming that you've gone ahead and worked those practice problems. Let's look at A, okay? To win the game, Victor needed to roll a nine with a pair of dice. What is the probability that he will do that on the first try? All right, well, all you have to do is look at your chart and there's four nines on the chart. All right, so that's a four out of 36 chance. And if you reduce that, that's one out of nine. All right, B, draw a tree diagram like the one at the beginning of the lesson that shows the eight possible outcomes of a three coin toss. All right, so the first time you toss those coins, you could get heads or tails. All right, the next time for both of those, you could get heads or tails. And then the next time, For all of those, you could again get heads or tails. Okay, so your chart should look like that. And then letter C. Jasmine is taking a four option multiple choice test. There are two answers she does not know. If she can guess correctly, if she can correctly rule out one option on one question, but no options on the other question, what is the probability that she will correctly guess both answers? All right, so let's just picture this. All right, you guys do a lot of multiple choice. All right, so she's got two questions that she's not sure about. Now, on one question, she knows one of the answers is wrong. So let's just say she knows that a is wrong. Okay, so she's ruled out at least one. Now on the other one, she hasn't ruled out anything. Okay, so the probability of her correctly guessing both answers is one out of three for this one and one out of four for this one. Okay, so we multiply those two products. No, we multiply those and we get the product, which is going to be one out of 12. All right. All right, hopefully you got those answers. Go ahead and start your lesson.